Walt doing? Man, we are so excited today. Normally we're over in the the back alleys or back country of East Tennessee, and today we're right here in Evergreen, Colorado with our good friend Chris Steinbeck with the Blue Quill Angler. What's going on? Welcome to my home turf here at, uh, yeah, beautiful Colorado. Welcome to the Blue Quill, and yeah, happy for tonight, and happy to meet you, and fish with you and Katie for the day, and yeah, show everybody our fun shop here. Well, we had a blast with Chris on Monday, fishing the South Platte, actually yep. the South Fork of the South Platte. The South Fork of the South Platte up in Cheeseman Canyon. It's an awesome place up there. John and Katie had a taste of it, and yeah, it's a good place. Just a taste, and we're looking forward to having dinner sometime soon, yeah, coming I love, back. I love, it. So, I love it. So this is the first time we've been, been at, at the Blue Quill Angler. So um, tell us a little about the history of the shop, yeah. about what side, like what makes this special, what makes this unique. That's really cool. So our shop, we've been around for 35 years. Okay. Um, we've been always up here in Evergreen. Um, our shop is a cool building. It's a standalone building here in Evergreen. Um, it's over a hundred year old building. We have um, yeah, a lot of fly fishing stuff <laughs> stuffed in here, but we have tons of history behind the shop too. Um, it has way back in the day, this used to be a machine shop. Um, our fly shop in 1987 opened up and we have this half of the barn is what they called this, the barn. And uh, yeah, and so it's really cool. So I don't know if Katie can show it, but um, there is uh, almost just like a, a whole tree branch right here yeah. hanging off the, the ceiling. And so it's a teepee shaped building as you guys could see there. Um, that tree branch you're talking about, that's the boom. That's how they originally built the shop. They use that to get all the posts set in place. Um, yeah, this is a, uh, it's really cool. So the, the boom right there is how they built the building back a hundred years ago. Yep. Well, yep. That, that's pretty that cool. Is. Let's take a, let's take a walk around the shop. Yeah. Um, and I know you've got all the, the, the premium brands. You've yeah. got all, all, all of that. And we're going to show a couple of your secrets in a little bit. Or maybe not secrets, Sorry. but Sorry. a couple of your tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but once you take Katie on a quick tour. Yeah. Come, come follow me. So this is right when you come into our shop. This is our main room right here. Uh, we have tons of flies, uh, 2,500 different types of flies, uh, rods, reels, anything you think of, Costa sunglasses, Smith sunglasses. Um, coming down, we have, and you got to excuse the mess a little bit, we have things moved around right now, but we have tons of merchandise down here in terms of apparel and clothing and waders and boots and nets and um, a little bit of everything. And as we go make our way kind of back shop and... This is, this is my favorite spot back here. This is where we spend a lot of time here. This is our tying room. Um, and we have, you know, here in Colorado, we fish a lot of tailwaters. We fish a lot of freestones. We have a lot of tying materials that are really good for the trout fishermen. Um, a lot of specialized materials that you get from um, a lot of Pat Dorsey's patterns. We carry all the special wings he uses for the top secret ditch and the sparkling RS2. And, um, all this classic patterns. You can find all those materials here. Um, we get asked about rough grouse all the time for the um, the bread crust. We carry that in stock, and yeah, and, and the glamour Madeira. The glamour Madeira. We, every time we use that, it was like, it. where do we get glamour Madeira? Well, we have it. We'll always have it in stock. Um, you can find it. Give us a call. We'll send it to you. Find it online. We have our big whiting wall in the back. And we carry um, hackle for pretty much most uses you'd want. We have great dry fly hackle in the necks and some of the saddles we have. We have great soft wet fly hackle with a lot of the hen necks that we have. Um, for those who don't want a whole neck, we carry the hunter packs. We carry the streamer necks and the saddles. And, and so if you're looking for feathers, we got pretty much a lot of stuff here. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for... Pretty much anything to tie a fly for Colorado. Um, hey, we carry a lot. There's Fred Hurst. That's Fred Hurst's uh, buddy. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's the Cree buddy. E everybody right. watching the show knows who Fred Hurst is. So. <laughs> Fred Hurst that's, is, that's what we is named our ours. Rooster that we have. In, in, I know the name, Fred Hurst. How'd you come up with Fred Hurst? How did we come up with Fred Hurst? That's anytime, when I was younger, anytime my dad would try to like be talking about a note, like, and not a real person, just like making a joke, he would call him Fred Hurst. Yeah, okay, so well. Katie's dad always always said yes. Fred Hurst. So, uh, so yeah. and, and Nan, Equus Nan, was always 
she's the first one that, that started calling them Fred Hurst live while we're, while we're live. So. Yeah. Nice. And hey to everybody who's watching tonight, Ken and John, and I think I saw Truman jump on here, and uh, Joe's on here. So um, we've got all kinds Sweet. of folks. Sweet. Tuning in tonight. So Steve. Swamp Fox says nice fly shop. Um, Jeff Truman. is on here. Jeff Rowley's on here. I like Swamp I, Fox already. <laughs> Swamp Fox, that's right. And, and I'm sorry, we, we can't see the uh, the comments quite yet, but we've got a, a really neat evening planned for you. We're hoping that, that um, we'll be able to see the comments. Yes, we will be able to in just a second. Um, but as Chris is going over um, one of his rigs that we used, and uh, as we're tying a fly, we hope that you all ask questions. Do you have something? Um, what would you do if, if we're fishing in these conditions? And let Chris, um, who's the actual pro here, um, you know, I, I stayed at a Holiday Express last night. That's about <laughs> all I can say. So, um, but, we're, but we'll let Chris answer those questions. But and, and any questions you have on fishing Colorado in general, I'm happy to answer too. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you ready to go and sit down? Let's go do it. And cool. for those of you guys just tuning in, we are live on location tonight at the Blue Quill Angler here in Evergreen, Colorado. They were really um, welcoming and cool enough to let us visit the fly shop and do some tying. So let's get started. All right. So first, um, what we're going to do is we, I guess we can we'll stand up for for, for right now because we're going to go over this. Uh, that we've got a rig. Ooh. So when. Um, when we first got in Cheeseman Canyon, Katie brought our eight weights, or sorry, eight weights, our, our nine foot five I was weights. Say, yeah, eight weights. <laughs> we, <laughs> big day. We, um, we brought our nine foot five weights, and, um, and we also brought our Euro rods. Now, with the, um, the Euro, Euro rods were nice, but I asked Chris, and, and he's more of the traditional style of, of fishing, and uh, I said, Chris, how long do people come and they're throwing the Euro stuff before? They say, well, I'm going to do it your way. And he says, usually about lunch, everyone switched over. Yeah, yes, it. Katie did catch all the fish, for sure. <laughs> Katie, no, Katie definitely didn't. caught the first fish, and she caught the last fish. I, I was the witness. I saw both. That's I that's me. Both. I like to start the game and end the game. I'm a, I'm a closer, a starter, and a closer. So. Yeah, I love it. And now, now we can see the comments. So, guys, mm. questions, ask away. Nice. Um, but but what, one thing I asked Chris to go over is the rig that we used. Um, after we put our year year year, year down, and um, and just had some phenomenal um, um, success with. So we've got it hanging up here. I'll let you. Yeah. So you know that we have a good Euro game out here too. Um, part of the tailwater game we have right now is really low flow. So sometimes with the Euro stick, um, I think we experienced it a little bit that uh, we caught fish, we caught mm -hmm. fish on mm -hmm. it. Uh, but it was harder to catch a lot of fish based on the flows being so low. So we throw a lot of traditional rigs with an indicator, a split shot, and, you know, a lot of two fly in for rigs, sometimes up to a three fly in for rig. Uh, and so what I have right here kind of hanging up, and I'm not sure if, how well people are be able to see this, um, but we have our rig down to a two fly rig um, with a little weight on front. <laughs> And then, um, as you can see, we we'll slide up the taper of our leader here, and that's where we're going to put the indicator. So we'll have an indicator down to the weight, down to two flies. Um, and we have a few little tricks we use here, too, because one of the things that helps us fish is our adjustments on the weight. This was, as you guys can test, one of the biggest adjustments we make all day here. Um, we fish a lot of the mid-water column which is important, especially when the flows are a little lower right now. And so we'll put the split shot in front of our first fly, usually 12 to 15 inches or so. And, and this was something that was new to me because whenever I would use split shot, yeah. typically I'd either use weighted flies yep. or under an indicator, or I would put split, split shot at the bottom yep. and do the bottom bounce or um, drop shot or what. So my, my, my weight would always be yep. on the bottom. Yep, we see that. We said it's a great effective way to fish too. Um, this is the right way to do it. This is the way. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say the right way. This is, um, we'll say, a good way of doing it. Uh, <laughs> a good way of doing it. Um, and so, you know, when you're fish like this and you put your split shot ahead of the flies, you know, and your indicator is sitting up high, that weight's going to go straight down the bottom. And what that allows you to do um, is you can adjust that distance between the weight and your first fly. And obviously, the closer to that weight this fly is, 
the closer to the bottom you're going to be drifting throughout the drift. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the adjustments we'll make. Usually we'll put a little attractor up front. Um, here in Colorado right now, we have our high water season. So we have a lot of water getting kicked into a lot of systems. Um, the worm game is good. And I know no, that we, we didn't fish one worm. We did, we, we did not fish one worm. Uh, I'm not against it. I know the worm debate. I don't want to get in the worm debate. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it's a great attractor fly for people, especially this time of year here in Colorado. Um, and usually about 15 inches behind that worm or a stone fly or a scud, whatever attractor you like to use, mm -hmm. um, we'll put a secondary fly. And um, a mercury pheasant tail this time of year is another really good option. And we fish that all summer long. And yeah. So oh, Chris Harris, who's getting ready to head up uh, to, I believe, Idaho or Montana very soon. He yeah. says the worm hatch is it's strong. strong. It is. This is we, I, I kid the you worm not, hatch. Uh, on the South Platte, we have times when the flows come up, and we'll catch these browns that have so many worms in their throat still. They're coming out of their jaw. They really? really well, they have so It's easy protein for them. Um, yeah, so it's a really good way of doing it. Um, yeah, so. And they're purple. I've heard that they love purple worms. Purple right? worms are good ones. They purple are okay. worms are good. Man. We throw, <laughs> think of the color we throw them. Orange, pinks, reds, browns, tans. We throw them. Yeah. Um, they're fun. And Steve, Steve said the, the pink sand one worms are, are killer. It. Pink is like, especially when you get that flow and it kind of stains the water just a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just that not clear. It's just that little stain. The pink worms will, yeah, they'll yeah. catch a lot of fish out here. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much the micro chenille is the one you've got right there. Is that right? Yeah, the micro, we use a lot of micro chenille and a lot of the standard size too. Yeah. You know, usually heavier flows, standard, mm -hmm. you know, lighter flows will throw that little micro chenille. Both cool. little. And they're totally unweighted, right? Unweighted. Yep. Unweighted. And we do, there's times absolutely we throw weighted flies. Um, just in, you know, the conditions we have right now are low flows. So we'll stay mm -hmm. a little, uh, a little lighter. Um, one cool trick that I, I got to show John and Katie. The weight's a big deal for us. That's probably yeah. us telling you. Th th this, is, this is awesome right here. This is, uh, this is the biggest adjustment we make. And everybody knows, you know, putting split shots on your line oh, no. is a, um, yeah. So putting split shots on your line's easy. Taking them off your line's a pain in the butt. And so a lot of times, being that we're going to be adjusting our weight to adding some, taking some off, adding some, taking some off, um, what we've done here, and this is a system that Pat Dorsey has really made famous out here. Um, and John Perizzolo came up with a tungsten putty. And this tungsten putty has been around a long time. It's some of the best in the game. Um, some of the putties you see on the market are really elasticy and really stretchy. They, uh, they don't work as well as the putty that John Perizzolo makes. It's called JP's Gray Nymphing Mud. Um, that stuff right there. It's, um, we'll crack some open here too, and I'll show you guys how we use it. So what, while um, you're cracking that open, Steve Yates asked, what hook do you use for the, for your San Juan worms? Uh, this one's tied on more of a scud style hook, like a, you know, 2457. Okay. Um, most of my hooks, I like tying on a straight shank hook. Okay. So I like the Tiemco 5262s. Okay. Uh, those are really good ones. That's, six, a, that's a little heavier wire. It's a little heavier wire. Yeah. And so, you know, getting for some heavier fish, bigger fish, bigger flows, that wire's not going to bend out. That hook will stay good for you. Um, yeah. So, here, so here's the putty. So, is that the entire piece of so the, the container? So this is the whole piece it comes. Okay. It comes with a full ounce of this putty. And this stuff, I know it's hard to feel when you're looking on a video, but it is really heavy. And I'm going to let it hit the table and you'll hear a good thud. That stuff carries some density. And so when we adjust our weight, all we do is we peel a little bit of this putty off. It's the, when, when we were fishing. You're getting well, some like requests, like uh, bring me a few to get chopped. Chop yeah. Okay, bring me some putty. Okay. And then all we do is we take that putty and we just mold that right around the split shot just like so. So the thing is when, when Chris was, was hanging out with me for a second and then he went down to, to Katie and he stuck a, a teeny tiny, like a, I don't know what a nice way, a booker size amount on <laughs> my, a, on, a, on a little box. A and he, he said, he said, if you need to make adjustments, break this in half and wrap it around your, your, uh, the split shot. And I feel like I need to get just a little bit deeper. So I took this a littlest amount and stuck on there and I just worked it for 10, 15 seconds. And it wrapped yeah. all, just like he's got here, wrapped yeah. all around that, that, um, that split shot. And it made all the difference. It really helped it get down without having to add another split shot or take split shot off. It is. 
and what's nice about it too is like <laughs> what when this gets down to in the water in the cold water that putty locks around that split shot so if you've tried to use putty before and you just put that putty on your line and you cast it flings right off but when you put around split shot it'll mold around that split shot it doesn't come off all day and then you get into a situation you need to take some weight off you just, like john just mentioned you peel some off or we need to add some on you add some on and uh, all day long we make those adjustments so this nymphing mud um makes your life easy makes your life easy and it keeps your flies in front of the fish and makes a big deal well it looks like we've got several requests to, we, to we leave here with some nymphing mud. I, think, yeah. I think i saw mike earlier say putty for a prize so um, Gary said to bring him a few. Gary said bring two. I think Chris said grab some. If you want us to bring some to you, if we're going to see you, send us a note. But we will, um, let's do this. So we're going to tie a really simple fly in a minute. Um, do the same, tie it up, hashtag Whip Finish Wednesday. We would absolutely love it if you tag um, Blue Quill Angler. Yeah, do that. We would love it. But we'll go ahead and pick up an extra thing of this next week or next time we go live. We'll we'll pick a winner that of the the fly we're going to tie and we'll and we'll give it out to you. So we'll um we'll definitely um uh, give one of these away. As far as now, Steve said cold activated like some striking. So how does the heat and the 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 temperature, the ambient temperature, the the air, yeah. how does that affect the density or the pliability of the putty? That's a great question. So on days it's really hot outside, it's you know, 90 degrees on the river, that putty's going to feel really soft, you know, and it's going to feel like it's going to come off really easily. And so, and it is, I mean, it is really soft when it gets like, it doesn't melt, right? It doesn't get liquidy, but just mm -hmm. comes through, just like, it's just not that firm texture like it is when it's cold. And so when it's warm, the same thing, we just take a little bit, put it around that split shot, and literally, we just take that split shot and let it dip in the water before we take a cast. Okay. And you don't need to let it sit in the water for a minute or two minutes. It's instant. So as soon as it hits the water, you're good. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So cool. good question though. Sound, sounds good. Sounds good. So we've got changing your weight. Yeah. Changing the location of your split shot. Now, when you're, when you're putting that on your leader, um, are you just crimping it hard? Or are you putting a knot or anything? So you've got to stop or how do you keep your split shot from sliding? Oh, that's really good. Um, another good question. So what you guys are see is right below that split shot. There's a blood knot right there. Um, I got to get used to holding this in front of me here. <laughs> Um, but that blood knot, um, attaches about 15 inches to my first fly. And then we put that weight on the top side of that knot. And so if that weight does slide, that knot stops it. It okay. doesn't go all the way to the fly. Um, yeah. So. And, and you, and you do vary the difference, the distance between the split shot and the, the first fly. I do. That way you can, um, absolutely uh, change the depth of the, of the fly itself. And the, the, those of y'all that have watched this forever, few months of probably sitting pull out fishing and tying tailwater flies pat dorsey's book yeah. um probably my favorite um book on, on because it's not just tying it's how to um uh it's how to rig how to fish uh, a lot more than just a time book but it's a phenomenal time yeah. book um th this technique's in that book right yep this technique's in the book you know pat has been so legendary out here founding these techniques and making life on the river easier for a lot of anglers and sharing that information he's, with he's everybody. He's been doing it a couple of years, right? Yeah, one or two. One or, <laughs> one or two years. He's, uh, yeah, so anything Pat says out here is like gold. So we um, we take it serious and it works. All right. It cool. works. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, let us know if you've got any other questions and um, we'll, we're going to tie a quick fly. Cool. Um, and uh, and Chris, that note, he's going to walk me through. Yeah. Exactly what to do and explain it and how to fish it, when to fish it. Um, the, uh, so tell us what we're going to tie. Yeah, so this fly is a great little midge merger. Um, it's very similar to a fly that's commercially tied called a KF Flasher. So we're going to tie a Flasher. That's, not, that's probably not a good thing being in my company to just kind of Flasher. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, we'll just, um, yeah, we're not within the school, so you're good. Um, <laughs> uh so this this emerger we throw it a lot first thing in the morning um midges here in colorado are a big part of the food source for trout um heavy in the winter time the spring fall um you know in the spring and fall we'll mix in our blooming olive mayfly hatches but all summer long uh, we usually one of the first hatches you're going to see on the colorado rivers or any river here in colorado excuse me is uh, a little midge emerger mm -hmm. and so um this KF Flasher is a simple fly. It's nothing but 
black thread, silver wire, Perfect. and some um, crystal flash, a little black dubbing on the head. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, super simple, but very effective. Um, a lot of times out here, we go and, um, you know, there's great patterns left and right that cover midget mergers. Sometimes here, the simpler the better. Um, and this, this pattern gets it done. Um, we fish it, um, you know, as big as a 16 or an 18, um, okay. and down to as small as a 24 and a 26. Well, they, they, and this is a fly that you can easily tie. I say easily, but it, it's not a difficult fly to tie no. in, the, in the smaller sizes. No, and that, and that's what's fun about it, especially for people. Ken, hold, Ken, our, the, Ken B is our buddy from Australia that okay. always work, watches. This is first first thing in the morning for him, awesome. and he always watches and then goes to work. So oh, thanks for really hopping cool. on, Ken. I would love to hear about the fishing down there one time. Yep. Yeah, and sorry about the, the camera moving. Everything Katie's trying. This is the first time we've uh, just used. It's like we're back on Instagram, but um, we're just using our, our phone. Not we don't have the multiple cameras. So bear with us as as, as we sit and talk as Katie gets the the camera line back up. Oh, sorry awesome! No, no, that's good. So um, yeah, so we tied these as down as small as down to a size twenty six, mm -hmm. um, which um, that's the dead of winter time out here. You know. A pretty standard size on the tailwater in Colorado, whether it's South Platte or the Frying Pan River is another river a lot of people across the country know about and love traveling to. Um, yeah, they, uh, these midges, fish them. Fish them, keep it simple. Um, I, throw, I throw these, there's two ways I like to fish these, John. I like to fish them um, as my last fly in the indicator rig, kind of like we just showed you. Mm -hmm. um, it sits higher up in the water column. Yeah, and uh, and just a great place for the bitches. And I'll throw it behind a dry fly too. Uh, there's times if you put that underneath a parachute atoms, and you're hitting a little soft risers. Um, another really effective way of fishing that. Okay, and this is a K flasher. K F. K F yep. flasher. K F okay. flasher. So um, this is a super simple. We're going to start with the which. Well, you tell me what hook are we start with. I uh the tw the Tiemco 2488. Okay. The 2488 is a great little scud hook. It's got a nice straight eye on it. Um and yeah, let's jump to a size 18. Okay. So I'll get this in the vise. And I've got my fishing hands, my river hands. I just probably should have clipped my fingernails and gave myself a manicure with this out a little bit more for Katie. John Collins, midges, just plain cash fish everywhere. Do you know John? I don't, but that comment is so true. Yeah. Um, that's that's it. I mean, there's times, especially here, right? Colorado's known because we have a lot of crowded rivers. Um, and it's not that bad. It's not that crowded. But those days where you have a lot of anglers fishing, um, sometimes those fish shift down and they eat the really small natural bugs. And, you know, in our case, like we're just saying those are midges. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've got our 2488 size six size 18 in the vise. Um, we're gonna go with the 12 aught classic wax thread and black, the Superfly classic wax thread. Um, yeah, 2488 is a it's a great one, Steve. Um, I'll try not to bang my head on the, the light. And we and Chris had a busy day today. He's been sitting around. On, back on the river, did you go up in Cheeseman today? I was I was down at Decker's. Decker's another famous part of the South Platte River. Um, we spent most of our days um, hitting different parts of the South Platte, like Decker's or like we went Cheeseman Canyon or the Dream Stream. Um, yeah, so today we're at Decker's and we've had um, we had a great day, a great day. A lot of uh, fish down there eating little caddis patterns and little midges in the morning and yeah, so. Been on the river. This is our busy season, so it's okay. it's well, almost we're, every we're, day. Which you, is awesome. you came in here almost sweating as you were <laughs> off the river, so we really appreciate. It. Nan, we're you're going to have to watch the shop tour um, later on, Nan, because we had a, a really cool um, tour. So uh -huh. it was it was pretty neat. We're over here at um, at Blue Quill Angler, so now we're going to quick tie tie one real quick. So we're going to use the 0 0.2 millimeter uh, bright silver. Tying wire. Oh, I got all excited. I saw hay crystals. Like, oh, look at that. Chris Harris stole my thunder. <laughs> Nan, <laughs> Nan, you're going to have to say hey to Chris Steinbeck right here. I'm a, I'm a little jealous right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to tie this on the top of the hook shank, and I'm going to work my way down. Now, these are just touching wraps. So the thing to 
to watch when you're tying flies like this is to make sure we're not leaving any big gaps, but we're also not overlapping our thread because we want this to be a nice, thin, smooth body. And right now I'm trying to tie by reaching over. That turned out okay. Um, so we've got the, the uh, thread wrapped about halfway down the bend. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but about halfway down the bend. When you tie your wire rod, which side of the shape do you tie your wire I'm rod? In this case, because I'm not going to counter wrap and there's no tail, Okay. I'm going to tie it right on the top. Now, if there was a tail and I was not going to counter wrap, I'd tie it on the far side. Okay. Because that way, if I bring my wire under the tail and my first wrap would go on top. Yeah. If there was a tail and I was going to counter wrap, I'd tie it on my side. Okay. So, yes, that's <laughs> I'll tie it on all sides. Oh, thanks, Jeff. It's this is a a learning curve for me. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. It's um, we're 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 we're, we're that's why we're tying this one because all we've done is put one layer of thread down, we tied a wire in. Now we're going to come right back up with touching wraps. So my what my thread is nice and flat right now. So if I see any of that wire, any of the hook, I want to make sure I'm covering that up, and I'm not letting the thread spool out right now so it's kind of cording up as i get to the front and that's exactly what i want I want this the thread to be somewhat corded up so if you can see it i'm going to angle it more towards you so you can see what i just did um started it right behind the about a half a millimeter half a, a hook eye behind the hook eye so i've got a little bit of bear shank here all the way down to halfway down the bend and then all the way back up and of course I did tie the wire in, so that that's under there as well. So, worse than fog in London. Now, man usually goes to work in in London. Oh, really? In, um, in New York City. So, uh -huh, okay. um, she's been uh, experiencing some of that nasty, smoggy oh, fog oh stuff that's come down from Canada. Oh, from the fires up right, in Canada, yeah. right? We 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 got a taste of those fires, that smoke uh, a couple weeks ago here. Really? Yeah, it, it was like woke up. We thought the fires were close. They really? were coming in from Canada. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try to on the size 18. I'm gonna try to fit seven to eight, uh, seven or eight wraps on a size 20. I think seven wraps would be good, and you can kind of work your way down as you get smaller. But once I go to a size 22, kind of use your own judgment on that. But once you get to a size 22, you want to start switching to the 0.1 millimeter wire. So you want to get a little bit thinner wire on the size 22 and smaller. Um, size 22, if you want to use the 0.2 millimeter, that's fine. But um, you do want to start going smaller wire as you go to the smaller hook shank. So I'm just going to bring my, my wire around. And I'm going to do pretty, not touching wraps, but pretty um, pretty close wraps. So this is going to be the segmentation here. So i got three wraps, four wraps, five wraps, six. That's a little bit further apart than I wanted, but for um, reaching over the vise, I'll call it good for now. <laughs> so I've put three wraps on there. I've not put anything in front. So I did not, I've just put three wraps, catching the wire, no wraps in front. I'm gonna hold my thread tight, helicopter that off, and that, that part's done. Where are you, John Collins? He's pretty close to you. Um, okay, so, um, oh, Jimmy, don't tell us it's in Virginia. <laughs> so I wish we could zoom out and stuff. But we're, we'll leave. You can actually see it here, hopefully. So we've got a nice pack of uh, mids flash. You can see just hold it behind the fly. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna grab this, and this is kind of like the um, the wire. The the smaller the hook, the fewer pieces we'll use. So on this size 18, we we'll use eight pieces of um, of the mids flash for the wing, and I'm just gonna use my scissors and grab two pieces. There's one, there's three. <laughs> I'm gonna grab two pieces. Um, I just set my, Katie would have laughed at me. I just set my scissors down and started looking for my scissors. <laughs> so I'm gonna lick it so they kind of stick together. Bring this around, hold the tips, cut it, so now I've got four pieces. Now, if you wanted to, you could just tie this in and fold it over but I want to do it just a little bit right now. This is how I'm doing it right now because I don't want to, I'm not going to sit and tie a couple dozen of them. Uh, if I was going to tie a bunch, then I would 
use more pieces of uh, crystal flash, but because I don't want to waste a bunch of crystal flash, as you can see, now I have from two pieces, now I've got eight total pieces of, um, of crystal flash here. I'll switch the directions of it. Bunch them all up. So I just put some moisture on it, we'll say. <laughs> and I'm going to cut so my tips are lined up perfectly straight. So if we can get you guys to, um, to tie up a bunch of these, post them, use hashtag WhatFinishWednesday. Great if you tagged Blue Quill Angler, but we'll um, draw a winner next time we go live for some of this putty. So all I'm doing is I'm tying this in on top of the hook shank, and I'm building my thorax now. Now I'm not trying to build any bulk. I'm just making sure that I'm, that my material is good and lashed down. So you see when I pull on it, it's not going anywhere. And, um, and I'm sorry, I've been talking this whole time. No, Have I messed I, something no, up? I, I'm watching. Everything's looking really good. Okay. Really good. You can't forget any legs. Because okay. Gary's usually like, dude, you forgot this. So there, <laughs> there's a, there, there's a good, the good thing. Is, that's one of the good things about not having the, the big camera here is you can't yeah. see my mistakes too much. They, I will, well, I'll tell you what, you keep doing, everything you're doing is looking really good. Um, there's quite what color crystal flash. This is pearl. Um, pearl's a, uh, you can yeah, use this is just pearl, not UV pearl. No, nope. and you could use the UV pearl. Okay. Uh, the UV pearl is all good stuff too. Um, just that little bit of flash in the wing is what you're looking for. Okay. Um, pretty simple. Um, yeah. Now, how about colors? Colors are good too. I blacks, purples, browns. Um, so that, but I heard they don't like purple. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they hate purple. Nobody throw purple. They do, purple Chris, doesn't Chris, work. Chris Harris, <laughs> they do, Jeff, they, they, no, Je Jeff Riley's on here. No, they, uh, never works. Whatever, uh, whatever's about that color, man. Yes, it is K Park. So Dan, I'm pulling out the K Park, K Park, the K Park. Nan and I are big <laughs> K Park. Yes. So That's we're pulling favorite. out the K Park. Um, and uh, because this is the this is like the traditional pattern, right? Okay. This is the yep. it, so we're going to go yep. with the black thread, black K-pop. Yep. Um, now while I'm dubbing this, and I was showing uh, Chris this, I just need a teeny tiny. This is probably enough for about two or three flies. Um, but I've pulled this off my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but yep. I've got the fibers are kind of aligned. I just grab from this hand, and I've got this piece, and I'm that's how I'm going to put it on. So I just pull out my thread. It's incredibly fine stuff. I mean, that's like, again, we live on the small fly game out here. That's our that's our mo. And um, having a really really fine dubbing like this is that's the difference of making your flies look good. This, I mean, this, you can see how many. This is a giant size eighteen, it, right? It, yeah. This thing right. is huge. So I've already put like four, five, four or five clumps on this one inch piece of. Um, so I mean, we, you yeah. could make this. Super teeny, but the thorax you want to be kind of chunky. Before yeah. we went live, you were yeah. you were telling me about that. Yeah, that's that's there's you know the two things I like highlighting in this fly, you know, is this you know a midge emerger is that bug emerges in real life. Their thorax um, swells right as they get their uh, gas bubble helps swim up to the surface, all that stuff. So I really like focusing on that thorax and having a nice little ball right at the head there. Um, so as far as lengthwise, do you want about 25%, 30%, or are you mainly looking at the, the diameter of it? I'm mainly looking at the diameter. Okay. I want a nice little crisp ball, you know, something that's going to be, that's going to stand out just a little bit. Okay. Well, mine might be a touch long, but one thing, I, I don't know if you can see it. I'm not starting, I'm starting my dubbing at the front of the, the hook, right behind the eye, but I'm not putting any dubbing right behind the eye. I'm leaving that for my whip finish. So I'm gonna do one layer of dubbing back till my till I hit my crystal flash right here, and then one layer back up. Let's make sure we got that good. It kind of tapered down a little bit, and now we're good. So let's see how well they can they can see that ball, and then you can tell me if that's <clears throat> I think that if that's good. Yeah, I think that looks good. And it uh, looks really good. And I like how Jeff Rowley said belly button fuzz. <laughs> so this stuff is it's just colored belly button fuzz. That's all it is. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah, you know, much. elephants eat peanuts. You know, True. Uh, <laughs> elephants eat peanuts. Um, and this is a peanut for sure. All right, so now we're going to just wet finish this bad boy, and we'll go ahead and do my yeah, normal. Tr Daddy Truman's got the comment of the day right there. Yeah, good one, Truman. <laughs> all right, so 
pull this around. Oh man! Yeah, I, here I'm here we go. See, I, I Thanks, just guys. I open the door wide open for everybody. I'm yep. happy people are walking in. This yep. is good. <laughs> here we go. Nice. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we've got our, our fly done. We've got a little little bit of um, now. One of the reasons, and this is just personal preference. You but got the fly done, but you have some some crystal the, flash the, the wings a little bit long right yeah. now. <laughs> Um, but I always like to talk about the, the Sally Hansen's and why I do it this way. If I were to put a drop of Sally Hansen's or head cement, and, and I'll be the first to say you don't have to use head cement if you do a proper whip finish. Um, but if, if I were to take this brush and just start putting it on the head there, it's going to soak into the, the thorax and that dubbing. And not, it's just, I personally don't care to do it that way. But um, we'll move on to the, the crystal flash. So, I'm going to put my scissors right on the halfway mark, maybe a little bit closer, pull my wing down and cut. And that's for me, when I look at that, it's kind of small. I'm going to kind of pump, pump it up a little bit. I'm going to fluff it up. Fluff it up. That's what I'm looking for. But you, but <laughs> one thing, well, you, you talk about it, about yeah. the, the flash of the wing. Yeah. So the wing that that's, so the, the thorax is one area to highlight. Obviously the other highlighting aspect of this fly is that crystal flash. Um, I don't like having that wing go way down the body. I don't like a really tall wing. I want uh, that little piece of flash that's going to catch their attention. And so like half the body length, which is about like what you just tied right there is perfect. You know, that's enough. Uh, just like Steve, exactly what Steve just said. It's just a glint of light. It just catches that little shimmer of light. You know, the idea of this, this fly, this is, you know, especially when you're fishing technical water. This is a fly that's going to fool that tough fish. You know, it doesn't, it's not overcomplicated. It's not, you know, too bulky. That really mimics the size, the, the size of the body, the slenderness of the body, um, and the whole profile of the fish. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, uh, it's good. I, I like the wing right there. I think that's almost, you know, it's almost like exactly where I'd want to cut right there. Looking awesome. Good. Awesome. So yeah. we're looking for that just like glint of light. It, it yeah. can be too long, but really not really too short, as long as you can see that flash. Exactly. That little flash is all you need. Okay. So, yeah, so, and so I might have been completely zoned out. Um, this is, this mimics a juvenile rainbow, right? A juvenile rainbow? That's what oh, it, 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 I'm just, I'm, oh, I'm trying uh, to do a bad no, joke. No, here. no, I got, you, to, I got you. I got you. So yeah. tell us what, what this is trying to, to, to mimic. So that's it. So it's the midge life. You know, midges. So not the juvenile rainbow. Not, not the juvenile <laughs> rainbow. Okay. Um, it'll catch a few of them. Uh, but no, this is just purely midges. Um, they'll take it for a little mayfly merger too. Um, so maybe a little betas. A little, a little betas, absolutely. That okay. little flash wing. Um, I tell people a lot. I don't care what the fish thinks it is. That's you know? no, that's what I'm talking about. I don't about. care <laughs> what the fish thinks. It is. As long as they eat it, I'm happy. Um, and so that black color is really good. Um, we'll change that color depending on the time of year, right? So if like we're in April, we're in our bluing olive patches out here, I might tie an olive and have a little darker olive head on there. Um, brown's really good. As we get into July, we get our PMD hatches and we throw, there's a ton of brown nymphs in the water. Um, so it's brown midges. Midges come in a variety of different colors, right? Dark ones, light ones. And so, yeah, the, the options, the creativity you can have behind a fly like this, as simple as it is, is up there you know you could change the color of the ribbing up you know if you have that light olive body and you throw a small black wire on there that's a good contrasting rib um yeah so be creative have fun so chris is keeps talking about purple not working john or gary i don't know we're fifteen thousand what here it's at cfs and or, yeah um, cf um you're talking about the the volume the of flows. water the flows yeah so that's gonna be a little bit more than our 150 we were at the other day. Yeah, like 130 the other 130. day. 130. You know, and so we the South Platte for those who don't know, that's Denver's water source. So all the reservoirs right now, they're just in fill mode, so they're not releasing a lot. So they are small flows, small flies. So um, just, just real quick before we close, I thought this yeah. was really interesting because you because Katie and I met you for the first time. I think it was at the Atlanta show the Atlanta five years show. ago. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it was you and Pat Dorsey. Yeah. And of course, you know, we're, we're probably just like everyone else. We're like, yeah. get out of the way. Where's yeah. Pat? Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, Pat. Yeah. 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 That's it. And, and, but we've, we've seen you at Denver. We've yeah. seen you in New Jersey. We've yeah. seen you at a bunch of different shows and we've been talking about fishing with you for, 
quite a while. Uh-huh. So we're really excited we got to, to fish with you. But your story is pretty so cool. excited. Yeah. So t- so tell us your yeah. story. So just like everybody, I grew up idolizing Pat Dorsey. Uh-huh. Uh, when I was getting into fly fishing, my father and I were self taught, and so we were going to rivers trying to figure it out on our own. Um, and back then is when online fishing reports were coming to be. And mm-hmm. so Pat had an online fishing report and I would check that every day. Right. And I'd check it and check it and I'd see when he'd update, he'd get all fired up, you know, and like it was, I, yeah, I idolized him. So my dad caught on to that. And so when I was in high school and I turned 15, um, 15 or 16, my dad got me a guy trip with Pat. And so I was at dinner Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there. That's an awesome way, present. Uh, and, it, <laughs> and that's the thing. I had no idea. So we're at dinner at that, um, an old steakhouse in Denver called the Trail Dust. Yep. And he's one of my favorites. And um, I got a call. Uh, my dad got a call. And he goes, someone's on the phone for you. And I thought it was going to be my grandpa or something. Wish me a happy birthday. And it was Pat on the phone. And he goes, hey, this is Pat Dorsey. You want to go fishing tomorrow? Oh, that's so cool. And I, and I, so I look at my dad, I was like, can I go fishing tomorrow? <laughs> and, I all set up and I didn't know. So um, we went up to the Dream Stream, which is high up on the South Platte, and um, had a great day. Learned so much in one day fishing with that man. Mm-hmm. Um, it was incredible. And so at the time he wrote, the, he was writing his first edition of the South Platte River book. And uh, my picture made it in there, and so it made your I, picture was in the first I, edition. I don't know; it's on page fifty-three, but it's on page fifty-three. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you kidding? The, the, the tripped and fell? No, that's pretty much it. You know, it tripped and that's fell. Awesome. Something and, and something and you're fifteen. I was fifteen. Fifteen. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that is it so was, cool. It was cool. So now, fast forward, you know, twenty-two years later. Twenty-two um, years later. I uh, am lucky enough, I still get to learn from Pat. Still mm-hmm. get to learn from every day. We have some incredible guides, and we get to fish all over Colorado, you know? Everything kind of within, like, two hours of Denver, from where we hit on Cheeseman Canyon mm-hmm. to um, the actual Colorado River and flow trips or walkway trips. And we have these guides that are just, they've been doing it their whole lives. So I get to continually learn from some of the best around doing it. And um, very lucky in that aspect. Um you know we have our guide staff is pretty well rounded we have a reputation um that's really strong here in denver um it's we've been doing it for 35 years um and trying to do it the right way trying to be the professionals on the river and taking care of the environments and um the rivers we fish and yeah we love it to death man i'm very lucky to be fishing with that still and uh yeah, it's a great to story. Yeah. Well, that that is that is really cool, That's and it. and I cannot encourage you guys if you're yeah. in Denver coming to the, this area. The, and the, the cool thing yeah. is, you now with Pat, you, if you wanted to fish a Pat, you can do it. Oh yeah. Uh, and and yeah. I, I didn't realize that when we were getting off, I was like, is there a premium cost wise? And yeah. there's not, but there's a premium yeah. wait wait right. Like that, it takes a while to. Pat books up early. You know, there's a lot of people who will book Pat uh, if you want him. Um, and I highly suggest it. The amount like I said, the information you get to learn, and that's the beautiful thing about fly fishing is you're never done learning, right? Mm-hmm. You're always different stuff. There's always stuff to pick up on. A day with Pat is one that you're not going to regret. Steve, um, you were talking about him. Yeah, really? Steve, Steve Parrott. Steve Parrott has a history here at the Blue Quill. Steve yeah. Parrott was a partner in the shop for a long time. Mm-hmm. Steve had brought a lot of success to the Blue Quill. Um, he brought Euro nymphing to the Blue Quill. <laughs> Wait, and this was back in the day. This is before like he got as trendy as it was. This is 2009, 2000. So two, he, he was still at 2009. This is, yeah, this is way okay. back in the day. And this is back like most the the euro games come so far here nowadays right, you know right. where back then there was a lot of like the old woven nymphs and a lot of the grub style check nymphs um mm-hmm. but yeah we had a bin of euro nymphs in here back then and that was steve perry and steve came from north carolina um he was uh he's an incredibly talented tire incredibly gifted angler um we uh he brought so many good things to the blue quill he's on different ventures nowadays mm-hmm. um he's moved on a little bit we miss him here and um yeah, he was. Uh, Steve's a good guy. So that's cool. I don't see. I don't get his. Uh, his homeboy. Cool. Yeah, Steve's a good guy, man. Um, he's uh, another guy. If you have a chance to fish and learn from Steve, try to. Steve's got DVDs out on Euro nymphing. Um, he doesn't have VHS though. <laughs> it's 
Not VHS, <laughs> now, but a, I did the see you do dude. have a VHS well, tape for sale up front. Listen, we we are nineteen eighty seven. We have some vintage <laughs> stuff here. You know, <laughs> this is uh, yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff. So, um, yeah, Steve Yates, that's awesome, man. I'm happy you know Steve Derrick. Steve's um, yeah, we have nothing but great things to say about Steve. So, so in call shop, they, you you can take fishing, Pat. You've got how, how many guides do you have? We have about twenty guides. Twenty. We have, a, we have about twenty guides, and you know, for us, holy we have um, you know, we have guides who this is their livelihoods, this is their careers. These are we try to go very professional with our staff mm -hmm. uh, from top to bottom. You're gonna find that's why you haven't offered me a job yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you're close. You're getting I'm there. Getting there. You're, you've almost yeah. made the team. No. <laughs> almost. You're like the, the restocking that, boy or something. That's Stock it. boy. But yeah, so we all specialize in teaching. And hitting different, um, yeah, hitting different uh, areas of the river and, and all skill levels, too, right? That's a big thing, you know, is everybody's at a different level, mm -hmm. everybody's at a different venture of their fly. For some people, take it a pretty advanced, some people are still, you know, working on mending. Um, we take we fish with everybody, we don't have age limits. We've I fished with as young as six, seven years old. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if we have kids and they're they want to learn, they have that passion, they want to go outside, we'll take them every day of the week. Um, everybody else skill levels. We have rivers that will challenge you. It will, it will challenge some of the best anglers around. We have rivers that are tailor made for the Euro sticks. Mm -hmm. We have uh, dry fly rivers. We have, um, yeah, we have a little bit of everything out here. So um, a lot of possibilities and um, we're always here online too. And people, if you have anybody out there is coming to Colorado, call us. We're happy to help you say, hey, you're gonna be in this part of Colorado. You know, you're down near Durango called Duranglers. You know, if you're out, you know, in Glenwood Springs or you're out in Carbondale fishing the Roaring Ford, Taylor Creek Fly Shop. We're always happy to help you direct you to some really professional guides around that area and uh, some good intel too. And, um, and call the shop. That's probably the best way. Is that correct? Call the shop for quick information. Or, or, or they, uh, the shop on Instagram as we, well. Yep. We're doing we're on Instagram, Facebook. But um, you personally might check Instagram once every six months or so. I'm not the big social media. No, no. You, not, just because you're <laughs> on the water I, all the I, time. I, it, it, I'm just, I don't it, want it, someone to send you a note. It, and then that, that's it. That's it. Call the shop. Um, I am not on social media that often. As you see, I have long days. Right. Um, yes, you do. And so um, <laughs> by the time I get home at night, there's a lot of things I do for my next day trip and so i don't do a ton of social media i know i'm way behind the curve on that but call the shop call we have shop. a ton of information online we just did a whole new website this winter so okay. um there we're gonna have so much content in our site on fish reports and tying information and we're gonna be coming out with some sweet videos and stuff um and that's all part of the site that we're still tweaking right now so you're not gonna find that right now on our site um but uh everything from the mud everything call us we can send it to you we you know a lot of times most orders we don't charge for shipping you know and we'll send it right to your doorstep so well, so we'll, blue quill the blue quill angler dot com yeah blue quill angler dot com cool. just um, not the blue quill yeah, we just, google it yeah google it you'll find <laughs> it find blue it, quill yeah. angler dot com um yeah call us at the shop our guys you'll, you're going to talk to a guy who's passionate on the phone who's just yeah ready to help out so awesome Awesome. That, that sounds great. Well, uh, 12 pack or a box of donuts. <laughs> I like that. that, that Steve Yates needs to come out to Colorado. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, guys, thank you so much for hopping on this live. Man. And the a big thanks to you, Chris. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, man, this has been, this been awesome. And unfortunately, you haven't heard much from Katie because yeah. we got these I'm new back here. We, we've got these new microphones and, right. and we don't have three. They, yep, I'm uh, I'm sorry, but if you have the chance, John and Katie are incredibly gifted anglers themselves. Go fishing with them, too. Oh. They, uh... <laughs> no, okay, so we're we'll gonna... pay you for saying that a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to um, bring, we are meeting Gary in a little while and, and next week, so we'll bring him some mud. We're going to um, give away a, a thing of mud, so we'd love it if you tag Blue Quill Angler. Um, use hashtag Wet Finish Wednesday, tie up this, tie up the uh. KF Flasher. KF Flasher. And um and either next week or next time we go live, we'll draw draw a winner and they'll get the uh get the thing is mud because this stuff is it's is awesome. I, I love it when it's not like a big company name on it. This, it is, this is it. This is mud. This is a local guy who's uh who's been doing it for a long time and he's got the recipe figured out. So well, he's got it. And and Katie is tired from catching all the all the fish. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. We really appreciate it. Jimmy, thank you so much. And I'll say this much. This is not, we didn't, I didn't catch the biggest fish I ever caught, but I, I caught 
very quality fish. Yeah. Probably the most beautiful yeah. rainbow yeah. trout I've ever caught. I mean, the yeah. colors on it. It was what seventeen inches or so, oh, yeah. and it was it was it was like the color of the shirt on a rainbow yeah. trout, like all the way down yeah. to pink and and the the spots on it, they're, absolutely gorgeous. They're all wild fish. It's the colors are incredible. Come experience nice. it. Come fish it. There's there's a lot out here. Nice. So so a lot of people be in touch. Thanks, John. Thanks, Swamp Fox, Bill, nice. Truman, Chris, Steve, guys. Nice. Thank you so much for hopping on. It's been awesome, and, and I'll right. let I'll let you take us out. Yeah, you bet. No, thank you guys. It was great meeting you guys, fish with you guys. Thanks for having me on, and yeah, I, I can look forward to keep watching your videos and watching a really talented tire. Thank you so much. Yeah. See you later, guys. Good night, guys. Bye.